The astronomical bands are separated wavelength bands of light, and each one is unique in its own nature. The UV, V, R, and I filters cover wavelengths from 350 nanometers up to 900 nanometers. The letter usually designates a certain color, but not always. In transitioning from the visible Cron and John filters, they're called UV, V, R, and I, you can transition to the J, H, and K band which covers the wavelengths of light between 1300 nanometers and 2500 nanometers. The K band is a short range between 2000 and 2400 and the wavelengths of light separate accordingly. Let's start with the Cron and the John filters. These are letter designations of the U, B, B, R, and I bands of the visible spectrum into the UV and slightly in the infrared. The U, V, B, R, and I filters are the traditional John and Crons. They have slow slopes. They tend to have crossover between the bands, but they've been around for a long time and astronomers have been using them to look at nebulas and other astronomical events and bodies for a long time. There is also the Gaia filter, which is a near-infrared blocking filter that transmits the Cron and John bands, thus eliminating infrared radiation as a pre-filter before getting to your regular filters. There's also called the Sloan filters. Now these are very much like the Cron and the John filters, except the crossover between the bands is limited. So you have steeper edges between those bands to create some distinction between those color bands. Those type distinctions separate the Sloan's from the Cron and John type filters for whatever your application may be. The astronomical bands don't stop there. They spread into the far infrared as well. The L, M, and N band are covered between the far infrared. The L and M bands can be combined between say 3,000 to 5,000 nanometers. And then the N band is the far, 7,500 nanometers to 14,500 nanometers. These wavelength bands have their own purpose. 7,500 to 14,500 nanometers or 7.5 microns to 14.5 microns are usually hot thermal bodies. Examples are lava flows or say, an exploding star, things of this nature. Each individual band has its own application that suits whatever the observer needs to see. We're observing the stars. These bands can also be used to observe Earth. By all, we are in the solar system, so the Earth is part of it. Looking down at thermal bodies from, say, small sat and cube satellites in the N-band optics are popular these days, measuring crops, weather patterns, many applications can apply. So a good imaging filter can resolve and separate those bands of light that you're willing to observe. These observations can be then compared to other scientists making the same observations. Standardizing these astronomy filters allows the industry to perform the same experiment with approximately the same filters, and then the data can be collected and compared and shared over the defense industry and commercial and even amateur astronomers. This is a huge advantage to the world, and we hope it brings everybody and information closer together. Our imaging filters have been in space, been on the ground for over four decades, and we hope to continue to provide those.